You're a genius at that. Brainstorming, Jennifer, Jared said. We're talking about writing a 30-minute speech. Spanish, I'm really good at. Spanish. I'm aware that Brad and Jim Bob and that also Karen got you upset while you were studying for Spanish. I want you to pass. Jennifer, I'll call you as soon as I get back on campus. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You can call me for a study day. She hugged him again and J.R. catches a sh shuttle van back to Crockett House. 8.20 p.m. J.R. walks into his dorm room when his phone rings. It's Karen. I'm sorry I haven't I haven't called you or talked to you. I've been so busy between school and Lubbock for life, Karen said. I understand, Jared said. It's been pretty busy here, too, between school, swimming, practice, and uh, my college ministry. My last class ends at noon. If you want to uh, stick around. No, I don't think so. I'm leaving right after government class. Call me tomorrow night. We'll talk, Karen said. 10 10 p.m. Kyle and Madison get back from the Wild Horse Saloon. Uh, which is also a sports saloon. And driving to the ranch driveway. Everyone is asleep, ex asleep except for 13-year-old Christine. Is anybody home? Kyle asked. Where have you been? Christine asked. You are sworn to secrecy and promise not to tell? Kyle demanded. What? We went to the wild horse. We saw a few dancers. We went to the wild horse. We saw a few dancers, Madison said. And if you tell JR or your grandmother, I swear you will be had. Why would I tell them? JR is a dork. And Grandma, she's too old fashioned for my for my taste. Well we gotta get home. Better tell Courtney to get George so we can put him in bed, Kyle said. November 24th, 3.50 a.m. J.R. wakes up early from a toothache. He brushes his teeth and then heads into the living room to read his Bible. He compares two versions of the Bible. The MRSV given to him at his baptism by Reverend Child versus the uh, special Red Letter King James Version of the Bible handed to him by Spirit Club uh, member Alex Pope. Alex was an accounting major who had become real close to J.R.'s cousin, Joseph. Meanwhile, at the same time, back at the ranch, Jim starts his oil field uh, pickup for the 4.30 a.m. drive to Fort Stockton. 5.20 a.m. At Denny's, J.R. is having breakfast with Brent Clark 
and Calvin Harlan. <laughs> Brand's lucky when he's got a straight flight to Dallas. I have to get on a uh, puddle jumper to go to Longview. Would have stayed here and had Thanksgiving with my girlfriend. But Mama, you know, Mama says I have to be there for Thanksgiving, Callum said. Well, it's an old, old, old Lemuel Clark tradition. It's tradition. Everybody's going and uh, uh, giving up a, a whole family to be there at the house in Lake Whitney. Uh, Christmas, we can do whatever we want. And you know, I think this year I want to be with Jr. Brent said. But then you better aim me on my father and make sure that he knows that you want to be on the list. And see, and hope if you can tell him uh, what courses you're taking and how interesting you are. Unlike Brad Wynn and Jeb Bob Horton, when it said there's never any danger in that I think Jared's trying to steer clear uh, from them Calvin said once they insulted Jr's best friend that was a big oops it was a big oops and I doubt Jim Hendrick will ever let them near the ranch again. 6 a.m. J.R. is at the library studying at the Center for the Visually Impaired with Brent Clark. They both had government class together. Brent and Calvin's flight to DFW didn't leave until noon. Meanwhile, in Fort Stockton, Jim was chagrined to learn that there was a problem with the rig because the generator wasn't uh, certified by the Texas Railroad Commission. Jim put up his stamp of approval and kicked the generator on. A.M. In government class, J.R. pays close attention to Frederick Mc, uh, McKay. The lecture of the day is talking about the legal foundations of America. 9 a.m. Darren picks up J.R. at Gordon Hall and drives him back to Swainfield Ranch. Darren is playing a Doug Supernos album. I don't call him Daddy. Uh, came on the tape deck. And JR starts getting emotional. Personally. He was looking forward to a chance to spend time with his father. 
10 10 a.m. Darren uh, Darren turns on the radio station when Rush Limbaugh is talking about uh, NAFTA and the problems with the Clinton uh, crime bill that was going on. He gets a text from his father saying that he would be leaving Fort Stockton at 11. And he would possibly say JR by 1 o'clock that afternoon. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Betsy is having a cook make Frito pie for JR's uh, homecoming. Her mother, meanwhile, is upstairs uh, fuming because the price is right is preempted because President Clinton was pardoning one of the Thanksgiving turkeys. Eleven AM Darren pulls the van into the drive. Elizabeth rushes out to hug her grandson, thankful that he is home for Thanksgiving. Darren hitches the ramp to the van and hoists Elizabeth into the van. And Elizabeth tells him to step on it and make it to Alamo Prep to pick up Christine. 11.15 a.m. J.R. is riding his red and white horse bend around a circle trail. The horse is a 16-year-old horse. His granddad Swain got for him in the spirit of the movie Smokey and the Bandit. When J.R. went away to Austin in 1988, it became Kyle's course. But today, Bandit was all for J.R. Mm. 11.30 a.m. JR is in the upstairs living room listening to Rush Limbaugh while the staff is making his lunch. Kyle goes upstairs to see his brother. Unless you didn't get too fat, Kyle, uh, Kyle teased. But if you bring that awful Brad or Jim Bob, you're in trouble. JR is relieved that Jack Fitzmiller is visiting family in New Haven for Thanksgiving. Before touring off to Chicago, New York, and Jose, San Jose to observe Hillary Clinton. Friedrich McKay was to, be, be, to give some more objective lectures next week. 12.45 p.m. J.R. is in his room sitting uh, in a small futon listening to Rush Limbaugh when his uncle Carl walked in. J.R. I brought everyone except for Jessica. She's at St. Mary's Hospital giving birth to a baby girl. Miriam, Carl said. I hope you know that I favor my mother more than my father. Yeah, I see you're called the public affairs and personal professional development as a career. Okay. Jared said. 